and I'm a, I'm a press guy, you know, so the first thing I have to do is read all the papers. So I read all the papers, basically front to back, you know, the Times, the Post, the News. And that's just one outlet of information. Then there's all the blogs, you know, then there's all the, uh, you know, Twitter feeds, then there's all the... Uh, you know, maybe some comments on certain on certain posts. There's the op-eds. There's all this stuff that you get this feeling. You know, like when you're a kid and like the movie comes on and it says like some words and you kind of freaked out for a minute because you didn't think you'd be able to read the words in yeah. time before it faded out. And you always could, but you always like kind of panicked. Yeah, it's that same panic. Like, how do I absorb all this information? So that. Everything that happened today, I've I've successfully downloaded and and comprehend. I think comprehension is the main thing. You could I, you know you could read. I mean I remember reading like Henry Huggins when I was a kid. You know, <laughs> and I'm reading Ramona Beza's blah, 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 and I'm on page page 100 and I'm like I have no idea what I turned 50 pages. Right. But I didn't really absorb anything, and I think that all these new outlets only perpetuates that sort of thing because. You can never have enough information. The, the new generation, I mean, they know where to find all this knowledge, but are they really soaking it in like we used to do reading textbooks and stuff? And, um, you know, I can Google, you know, why, why is the sky blue? And for that moment, I'll know why. But will I retain that? Inf will I retain that knowledge? And and there are, there are researchers that say that you don't because you're not using the same pathways to get to that knowledge as as we used to in school. I had a conversation with someone the other day where it's like you run into these people who you know you haven't seen in in flesh and blood in a while, but you feel like you know everything that's going on in their life, but you sort of feel awkward about broaching these topics because you haven't actually had a conversation with these people about it so it's like oh jd you know i know you had a baby and you got into a car accident and uh and you, you, gotta, you eat at this taco place a this, lot <laughs> yeah but you've actually never told me that personally right. you've broadcast it like I, I just got engaged so it's like and of course i posted it on facebook i wrote like engaged period you know that is all that is all a bunch, bunch of people congratulate. It was cool. It was nice to see. You know, it's kind of like the the new way of, of sending a card. You know, people don't do that anymore. So now they just write cool. No, because you can you can click like. And it's also because it's so passive. It's like I could put up all this information on my page, and I can assume that people read it. But really, I have no way to acknowledge to know this. You know, because it's just out there. It's strange because it seems like it's the safest form of intimacy, even though. It's not very intimate at all. Yes. I think it makes, I think it allows people, people feel a lot more comfortable sharing things for some strange reason with this massive unknown than they do person to person. I think that, and I fear that people are not living in the moment because they're so busy trying to immortalize the moment. Like, hey, we're going to the deli. <laughs> let's, take a bunch of, let's take a bunch of pictures of ourselves going to buy a cheese sandwich. Like, okay, but are you really enjoying going to get the cheese sandwich, or are you too busy documenting getting the damn cheese sandwich, mm. you know? <laughs> now that's the story of my life. <laughs> Part of what was so cool about bands back in the day was, like, was the, um, was the speculation. Like, oh, you know, this band comes through town, they play this awesome show, and now that's it. You don't hear about them again for six months or a year. All you have is that half hour, hour on stage to talk about. Like, did you see that they played that song? Did you see the way he looked at this guy? Did you hear this? Did you, you know, all these rumors and stuff. And it used to, it used to really build the, um, the anticipation for the next time around. Hmm. Um, but now there's no more speculation. Now it's non-stop updates. It's like your favorite band, you know when the drummer of your favorite band is on the toilet. Yeah. And you know when he's fixing his car. And you know that, you know, and it's, there's no room for the imagination to really like flourish because it's just non-stop Don't let, there's no time for me to speculate because you actually, you just told me what's actually happening. 
freedom is being able to live anywhere in this world, but choosing to live in Bay Ridge. Um, freedom is being able to, you know, work any job, but working the job I'm working now. Um, you know, freedom is rolling the windows down in your car, you know, on like a, a mild... And rolling your windows down on a winter day, but putting the heat on so you get the both best of both <laughs> worlds, it's great. and blasting the radio. It's a little bit of absence makes the heart grow fonder, and it's a little bit of you don't know what you got till it's gone. And you add those two things up, and that's why I'm still here. I've been around the world. I mean, I've been to, I don't know, 50-something countries and six continents and all this stuff. Um, but... If anything, all that traveling made me really appreciate Southwest Brooklyn and Bay Ridge and, and made me really want to plant serious roots here and always come back here. And I think that without all that traveling, I would have never have um, come to really appreciate what Bay Ridge is and has come to mean for me. And I, I couldn't imagine living anywhere else. I mean, I, what inspires me is that I've been able so far in my life to really just kick down a bunch of doors, and once I'm inside, I just figure out how to do what I gotta do, you know, like, um, and I don't know what, what planted that seed in me, but I just sort of ran with it. My boss is an elected official who truly cares about people, you know, and, and that's inspiring to me, because it shows someone who really cares about helping people out and, and not about his his trajectory of his career and his ambition and stuff, right. you know. If something good happens, cool, but I'm here to help people. And, I mean, for the longest time I felt that when we're on this earth, we're, we're, we're judged by, in the end, we're judged by the number of lives we've touched, and, and that's it. So if this is the place where I can... I can help as many people and touch as many lives as I can, and this is where I want to be. You know, and, and I just feel like, really, like, what else are we here for? You know, I mean, if, if, not, if you're not going to touch people's lives and, and, and make people feel better and feel like you, you can advocate for them and help them, then what, what's the point? To make money? Like, I, I feel like I'm such a different person now than I was when my dad died. And I don't know if some of that was, like, subconsciously like okay I gotta get serious now because like I'm the guy you know what I mean or what but that was a real turning point for me and and I think um, looking back on it it's not so much that like I miss him on a daily basis but it's like so much stuff has happened since then that I forget like what he was around for you know like was he around for that Oh shit, no! You know, are you, what? and so much stuff has happened since then that I feel like, wow, I I didn't do anything before that. But really, before that, I had done so much. Like I was touring like crazy, yeah, all this stuff. But him dying was like a real, like, like you know, it was a real. Um, I don't know what the word is, but it was like a real mark. You know, like it really set the tone, I guess, for the the person I was meant to become. You know, there's always going to be fragments of, of your childhood there and your youth there, and I'm glad there is, you know. I don't regret anything, you know. But, um, yeah, I guess it's just, I, I think it's just delineating what is responsible. You know, it's right. knowing that, okay, this is what I have to do, and I'm not getting any younger, and this is what I want to do in the time on this earth, and this is what I need to sort of set myself up to do it. Right. You know, and not just being like a free spirit. You know, right. like, um, you know, but, but, you know, but, but still retaining that sort of, you know, wide eyed outlook on the world, you know, because otherwise right. then you're, you know, you're dead. There's so many different ways to interpret it. I think the, I think the human mind needs the chance to sort of, you know, show off a little bit, you know, and not only be told like black and white, you know, yes and no. It needs the chance to be to sort of have this to show off its its kaleidoscopic possibilities. You right. know, to say there's a red dot on a on a white piece of paper. What is it? You know, the Rorschach test, right. that kind of thing. That I think that if if that 
part of the human mind isn't stimulated, then, then I think it affects you in other ways that you may not realize. Like I have people that say, I'm not really into music. Like, what? Yeah, I don't even understand that. I, I don't. I got music on in the house. When I leave the house. <laughs> it's on my iPod. I was starting to put it on before I'm out of the door. It's right. always there. Yeah, I don't get that. Or music like, I don't really get life, art. So. It's like, okay, I get. All right, but. Well, because there's nothing to get. That's what I was. Nothing to get. I always I tell get people, it. what do you think about it? It's not what you get. What right. do you think when you see yeah, it? Yeah, to tell me what you think. Yeah. If you think it's it's bullshit, well, then that's what you think. Right. <laughs> you do get it. You do it get is it. affecting right. you. You think it's bullshit. Yeah, that I don't understand. Yeah. I think, you know, people don't want to feel. You know, people have a tendency not to want to feel challenged. So, if something is challenging to them, the first, the the knee jerk reaction is to hate what you don't understand. Thank you. Probably the kinks this time, this time tomorrow. Um, you know, this time tomorrow, where will you be? You know, that it's, it just sums up all that stuff. Just thinking ahead and and um, you know, trying to be conscious of your decisions and and the consequences of, you, of your decisions and every action has an equal or opposite reaction um, that kind of stuff having someone there that is supportive and understands what I'm trying to do and you know and and and, and gets me but still loves me sort of unconditionally is awesome um, and someone that I just feel that I'm a better person just for knowing this person so if I can hang out with her all the time, then I'm going to be really awesome. You know, so, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's what it is. It's just having someone that just makes you better, you know, and and someone that, you know, you you feel uh, that you could be a team together, you know. I mean, and you can you could take on the world together instead of trying to take it on alone. No one is born you know, a jerk, you know, right. jerks are made. So it's like, you're going to go through life and there's going to be a lot of stuff that's, that's going to really affect you one way or the other. And you can let that all, you can let it affect you. And then you can then also turn into, you know, an asshole and pay that forward. Or you can just let that stuff bounce off you and still remain the person that you are. If you, you want to die broke, not, not, penniless but broke in the sense that you just gave it all you know you just you gave every ounce of yourself to uh helping other people or m trying to make your little corner of the world a better place otherwise what's the point mm -hmm.